What's up, carbohydrate-containing creatures? Today we're talking about the Bulgarian split squat. Now, this is one movement that you must include in your training. Now, I realize must is a strong word, sort of like musk is a strong scent, or CEO, but I really do stand by that. I think they are good enough that everyone should include these in their training. And here are 10 reasons to try to convince you. The first is gonna be stabilization and balance. So because you're only on one leg, it's a unilateral movement, not a bilateral movement, including two legs. It has a lot more inherent stabilization requirements, and it's just going to be better for developing balance and stability. If you want to be a better athlete, these are going to be absolutely awesome for a myriad of reasons. And that not only includes getting faster at moving in a straight line, but anytime you want to cut or twist or turn or revolve, that kind of movement, which is prevalent in almost any sport... These are going to help a ton. If you think about it, most athletes spend a hell of a lot of time on one foot and one leg, and therefore training one leg at a time makes a lot of sense. Now, I'm not saying the normal back squat or front squat or leg press, those are not useful at all, but I think you should have some unilateral movements in your training plan, and the Bulgarian split squat is going to be a very good candidate for being one of those. Number two is gonna be less spinal loading. So a back squat, a front squat, all of these uh, axially loaded movements, they are gonna put a lot of stress on the spine, on the spinal erectors. That is gonna be the limiting factor for a hell of a lot of people, especially tall athletes. Some people just can't really get into a great position especially when they are back squatting. It just doesn't really train the legs very effectively because it's working a lot of lower back and that's the area that is getting most of the stimulation. Now, I don't want to fear monger and say lower back is going to pop, you're going to herniate discs. Herniations account for 3% of back pain, okay? So herniations are really, really overblown in terms of how prevalent they actually are. Um, still, I think for taller people, for people with longer legs, unilateral movements can be an absolute godsend. And if you do have a history of herniated discs or any kind of lumbar issues, this is going to be a really, really good way to bring your legs up to snuff or keep them in good shape. There's also something called the bilateral strength deficit, which is where when you are using two legs, each leg doesn't get quite as much juice from the central nervous system. Bartender says that's the strongest stuff they got. Try it, Marty. And when you're using one leg at a time, you actually see more muscle activity in a lot of cases. Benefit number three of the Bulgarian split squat is going to be the fact that you don't need a rack, you don't need a barbell, and you can do them with dumbbells or even just your body weight. And they can be very challenging if you do high reps, if you go deep, if you really focus on the muscles being worked. Now, especially if you're training at home, you might not have access to a squat rack. Uh, I've had situations where even if I had access to a gym, the goddamn gym didn't have a squat rack. I had to set up a barbell between, I shit you not, and there's video evidence of this, an incline bench press and a bench press, and I had to sort of like squeeze under there and then start the set from there. Other times I had to actually power clean the weight up just because there was no rack available, and that sort of limited the weight and limited the amount of stimulation that I could put on my legs. With the Bulgarian split squat, that's not really the case. Because you're using one leg at a time, even with that bilateral strength deficit, you're still going to get more stimulation with less weight. Furthermore, uh, because there is less weight, it usually takes less time to warm up. So for me, on the back squat, I usually go 40 kilos for one or two sets, 60 kilos for one or two sets, 80 kilos for one or two sets, then 100, 110, and then maybe into the working sets from there. That's like six or seven warm-ups. It takes a long time. I've had a history of hip issues and it just doesn't take as long if I'm doing Bulgarian split squats. Now, you do have to do twice as many working sets, obviously because you do your left leg and then your right leg and then you put your right foot in and take your right foot out. You put your right foot in and you shake it all about. Your left leg and your right leg, which takes twice as long but at least the warm-ups are generally a lot faster. Number four, speaking of left leg, right leg, they can help to identify muscle imbalances and maybe correct them as well. I saw Martin Lysis, the Martins Lysis, I always get his name wrong, uh, the reigning world's strongest man, I think. 
him doing these because he had a history of like muscle imbalances and he had some labral issues, I think, or hip issues. And I think this can be a good way to try to find out if you are balanced. You might not ever feel that on a barbell squat. You just might not feel it. Your body might be compensating and you just don't know. Whereas with a split squat, one leg might feel a little bit different in how you set up. Maybe the adductor pulls more on one side or you're just, your sacrum is a little bit twisted. And I can actually feel that myself personally uh my right side feels a little bit weird my left side is stronger and you know this can be a good way to identify it and then maybe to also help correct it as well if you do them on a regular basis you have to actually do them to get the benefit go figure number five is you get a dope hip flexor stretch on the back leg now a lot of people have tight hip flexors i would say out of all the muscles in the body that's the one that gets the most tight if you're a runner if you're a sprinter that is actually going to limit your stride because you can't get full hip extension. You can't put as much force into the ground as you actually want because your glutes and hamstrings, your hip extensors, are actually being limited by the front of the leg. You're actually fighting yourself with each stride. So if you loosen it up in that bottom position, you can actually get a better stride. And some of the best runs that I've had in my life were the day after Bulgarian split squats. Even though my glutes were fatigued, they were activated they were turned on and the hip flexors were loosened up and i just felt very smooth and in control and my stride felt very open and balanced and everything felt much better than the day before it will also work the hip flexor a little bit uh, the emg data shows that the back leg has quite a bit of muscle activity and the hip flexor has not really worked with a lot of other exercises back squats not really any kind of squats you're getting hip extension not hip flexion uh, therefore, it's not really going to be working a lot of the area. Same thing with deadlifts. And so most movements in the gym, except for maybe hanging leg raises, aren't really going to be working the front of the leg, those hip flexors, which are pretty damn important for a lot of things, especially running, sprinting, that type of thing. They're actually vital and very much overlooked. Number six is going to be that you can get constant tension. Now, you can get this with squats if you do partial reps and you just sort of don't go all the way up, you don't go all the way down, you just sort of focus on extending the leg. But this is much, much easier with Bulgarian split squats because you can almost push forward. You're pushing back with the back leg and forward with the front leg, and therefore you get this really gnarly constant tension effect. And I've had sets of Bulgarian split squats where afterwards I literally couldn't walk. Like, gun to my head, I couldn't walk. I fell over because that leg was just completely exhausted and non-functional and just fucked up. Uh, I've had times where I just fell over and people are looking at me in the gym like I'm, I'm drunk or something. No, I'm not drunk. I would have failed a sobriety test, but, you know, it, was, it wasn't, it was you know, the alcohol officer. I was just doing some Bulgarian split squats. And you don't really get this effect with back squats or front squats maybe for a super high rep set but you know it's not really the same that shit hits different number seven is the glute medius now the glute medius is an essential stabilizer on the outside of the hip and it is absolutely vital it is incredibly overlooked it is the cause for and i will stand by this it's a big statement most running injuries most running injuries are actually hip issues so a foot issue probably a hip issue Knee problem, probably a hip issue. Lower back, groin, IT band, plantar fasciitis, shins, ankle, Achilles tendon. They're almost always a hip issue. It is that your hip is not absorbing the impact properly. When your foot strikes the ground, the glute medius is what stabilizes. And it's absolutely important for this to be strong. The act of distance running is not enough to prevent injury for distance running as shitty as that sounds you almost certainly have to do supplementary work for the lower abs for the lower back for the glute medius probably the glutes themselves uh, the hip flexors just to keep that whole area strong stable and your whole lower body injury free it sucks honestly the worst part of being a runner is doing your clamshells doing your split squats and doing all the supplementary work but especially if you're a serious competitive runner this is shit you really do need to stay on top of otherwise you will have a ton of injuries and trust me i can absolutely promise you that number eight is you can actually get deeper than a normal squat so especially if you use a long stride you can get a much 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 better glute stretch 
you get a stretch on the glutes, stretch on the hamstrings, and that's something that you can't really get nearly as much with a normal barbell back squat. And this is just because you're in a split squat position and the upper the upper leg can travel a lot more higher more higher god damn it stretching the muscle is actually an independent trigger of hypertrophy just the stretch alone is something that is doing a world of good probably through activating mTOR don't need to go into that but still it is very very good for muscle growth especially if you really focus on that bottom position that you can't really get to with a normal squat so if you're doing quarter reps in the bulgarian split squat uh, I think you are absolutely shortchanging yourself. If you can't get to full depth, just go as deep as you can and actually just try to get deeper over time. This is one of the best ways to improve your mobility. I see so many people just dicking around with the most useless mobility stuff when just doing this would be more effective. I know it's harder. I know it's uncomfortable, but that loaded stretch is going to be absolutely gold for improving your mobility long term. Number nine is going to be that it is flexible. Now, I don't mean in terms of mobility, in terms of your joint positioning. I mean in terms of how you program it and how you actually do it. If you take a long stride, it's going to be a ton of glutes, glute medius, uh, upper hamstrings, adductors. If you take a shorter stride, it's gonna be a lot more quads. Now you can manipulate your back squat to target certain areas more, but I actually don't really advocate that because it can put more stress on the lower back. And plus you kinda of wanna have that technique ingrained and you don't wanna be like, oh, today's a, a hamstring back squat day. Today's a glute back squat day. Yeah, next week I've got my quad back squats. All right, next up we got squats. Now I'm gonna start a little light on this because I don't know how this is gonna turn out because we're doing a mechanical drop, starting out with a high bar squat, really quad dominant, walk those feet nice and close, 20 reps. And then we're gonna roll that bar down, feet go nice and wide, 20 more reps with a low bar squat. It's gonna suck. I think that's sort of borderline retarded, don't do that. But with a split squat, I think you can do that. Taking a longer stride is more glutes, shorter stride is more quads. And, you know, that can be a good way to switch up things a little bit and to get muscle growth in the areas that you want. Number 10 is going to be you can use high intensity techniques. I would never, ever have someone do a drop set on back squats. Because we're doing a mechanical drop. Start. Just why? No. That's, please no. Please God no. Great practical joke, Jim. Got me go to the end. All right, next up we got squats. Now I'm gonna start a little light on this because I don't know how this is gonna turn out because we're doing a mechanical drop. No, God! Right, starting out with a high bar squat, really quad down. No, God, nice please, no! 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 And then we're gonna roll that bar down. No! That's a bad idea. Don't do that ever. Um, you know, risk or reward. Uh, but for a split squat, this actually makes a lot of sense just because the risk of injury is going to be a lot lower. There's no spinal loading and you can just drop the dumbbells. It's very easy to set up. Often I will do partials as well. So I will go to failure and then just drop into the bottom position and just stretch the shit out of, the, out of that glute. Poor wording there. But you get what I'm saying. You just get that stretch on the muscle and you just keep the stretch and you feel that stretch and that can be a really good way to trigger muscle hypertrophy. Um, and you can do a combination. You can go to failure, then do partials, then drop the dumbbells, do a few more full reps, then back into partials, then only body weight. And you can really just like fucking destroy yourself in a way that back squats just isn't really safely possible to do. So there you have it. There are 10 reasons why they are worth including in your training program. I don't always include them in my own training program, mostly because I am absolutely fucking terrified of them and I dread them on a very, very real level. I think they are worth including even if they're uncomfortable and horrible and suck on a lot of levels and require a lot of concentration and willpower. But uh, yeah, do them. That's all. All right, that's all for this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, YouTube stuff. You know what to do. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.